and this is uh, Yang Sun, uh, also from uh, Stanford University. And uh, Yang Sun is a, a clinician scientist with a clinical specialty in glaucoma. And um, yes, he's going to speak about, let me get the exact uh, title here, um, Joubert syndrome and ciliopathy, relationship to ODD and optic neuropathies. So please, Dr. Sun. Okay. Um, can you uh, hear me okay? Okay, so, um, okay, well, thank you for um, uh, staying on. And uh, um, so I'm a glaucoma specialist uh, for clinical practice, um, but in my uh, laboratory, we actually study uh, more than uh, just glaucoma. Uh, I work on uh, a, a group of rare diseases, uh, and one of them is uh, uh, Joubert syndrome. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today, and you uh, see why it's relevant to the topic uh, on hand. So the objectives are to define what is Joubert syndrome and to uh, think about what are disruptions in cilia in causing eye disease. So here's a, a case of a patient, a 16-year-old girl who was reported to have 20, 40 vision in both eyes. Anterior segment exam was uh, more or less normal, but she has very apparent optic nerve pedrusins and also retina findings that are uh, consistent, uh, which I will talk about in a second. And second patient, uh, I'll talk about two of them together because uh, uh, it's, uh, you'll, you'll make more sense. The second case is a uh, six-year-old boy uh, who has uh, poor vision since birth. Uh, she ha he has hypotonia of the face, um, ele elevated LFTs, liver function tests, and uh, ocular motor apraxia. His vision tests out to be 2200, and his fundus exam is shown. He has no uh, visible optic distrusion, um, but of course, it's not uh, uh, easy to look for a six-year-old. Uh, and for both uh, patients, they have uh, essentially flat ERGs, and they have something that's very unusual on MRI. They have both have MRI performed, and they look like they have this molar tooth on uh, MRI membrane. And what, is, what the diagnosis for both children is that they have Joubert syndrome. Joubert syndrome, so what is Joubert syndrome? So Joubert syndrome is a group of diseases that's called ciliopathies. Uh, the defect of the cilia can present with a uh, various uh, phenotypes, including kidney disease, uh, polydactyly, they can have six fingers, six toes as shown here. They can have hearing loss, renal degeneration, as well as uh, uh, obesity. Cliff palate and hydrocephalus can also even be part of this uh, group of diseases. So what is cilia? Cilia is a, um, uh, a subcellular uh, organelle that is uh, uh, protrudes from the apical surface of the membrane. And uh, here you see here's a EM uh, of cilia. Uh, our laboratory worked on cilia and uh, the diseases uh, uh, affecting that, uh, the, the structure. Um, you can see that the cilia is comprised of two components. It has the axonemal portion that kind of sticks out like a lamppost and it has a basal body portion that anchors it to the cell body. And the cilia turns out to be really critical for uh, human um, development um, in part because the so what we care about in the eye, uh, what, what we think about in the eye is that the connecting cilium uh, for the photoreceptor is a uh, modified primary cilia. So we think so this connecting cilium has to be functional in order to transport rhodopsin to the outer segment. And the loss of the cilia uh, function or structure can lead to renal degeneration, which is shown on the bottom. So the patients who have problems of transporting proteins to the outer segment, they can have renal degeneration. Um, and that's the reason why a lot of ophthalmologists are interested. Uh, in terms of the signaling uh, pathways involved, uh, there's uh, cilia is involved from uh, hedgehog to uh, uh, wind to uh, PCP, and this is uh, just a a uh, overview of uh, what are the some of the pathways that we know have been disrupted in cilia signaling. And coming back to Joubert syndrome, Joubert syndrome in the eye presents with RP and ocular motor apraxia. So that means they have difficulty initiating saccades. They can have renal cysts and uh, uh, other systemic uh, uh, abnormalities like polydactyly, cliff uh, lip and cliff palate. Uh, but the most critical thing we see uh, also on exam is uh, the um, uh, molar 2 sign on MRI. And the, the uh, 
epidemiology of this particular disease is not is pretty rare. It's about one out of a hundred thousand uh, newborns. Uh, it can be autosomal recessive and X-linked. Um, our group had uh, uh, summarized the eye findings of uh, 250 for Jobert syndrome patients, and we uh, found, so here on the bottom, the pie chart identifies what are the mutations, no mutations of the Jobert syndrome that currently has been reported. And even with this, uh, there's a uh, fraction that's uh, still undescribed. There are 24 uh, uh, addition, uh, genes that have been known. Um, and in the red, I highlighted this INPP5E, which is uh, the, the uh, gene that I'm uh, really interested in. Uh, in part because, so what is IMPV5E? So IMPV5E is an inositol 5-phosphatase. Uh, this is the protein uh, domain of uh, uh, the uh, structure of the IMPV5E protein. Uh, in the N-terminus, there's a proline-rich domain. In the C-terminus, there's a, a phosphatase domain. The mutation marks uh, up here indicates where uh, mutations of these 5-phosphatase uh, 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 domain of IMPV5E cause uh, Jobert syndrome. And also in green, the loss of the C-terminal tail, which anchors it to the membrane, can cause uh, its uh, abnormal distribution and can cause a similar disease called Morm syndrome. So IMPV5E is a, a family of uh, uh, these five phosphatases, one of which uh, we are studying a lot on is uh, called OCRL, which is not shown here, but it causes congenital glaucoma and cataracts. So, um, so there lies my link to uh, um, my clinical practice, but also why I think cilia is important in uh, such a various uh, um, uh, uh, human diseases. So in the eye, um, so uh, going back to the function of this particular protein, we have known a lot about this. Uh, when I was a uh, graduate student, uh, the lab that I was in, uh, Phil Majerus' lab at WashU, he had purified this protein and showed that the, based on uh, 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 thin liquid chromatography that uh, uh, the primary substrate of IMPP5E is phosphatidyl inositol 345P3. Uh, but in the uh, interval, like 20 years since uh, this was, was done, um, we show that this actually in vivo, so in the animals, it uh, uh, works on uh, PIP2, PI45P2. Uh, and this is really um, important uh, because there was a human um, disease link that was made in 2009 by Joe Gleason's um, group. And uh, what they discovered was that mutations in this particular gene can cause this group of ciliopathies that includes the Jobert syndrome. So um, uh, the, uh, as you can see here, this, uh, the IMPV5E protein can localize to the cilia in the RPE cell cultures and also in the connecting cilium. Uh, the loss of IMPV5E in humans can cause abnormal uh, behavior to serum uh, treatment uh, shown on the bottom right here. On the top is uh, the normal, on the bottom is affected. So what does that mean for eye development? Uh, if you knock out IMPV5E in the animals, you can see that they have a, a um, polyotropic effect just like in humans. They have loss of eye in such a significant, they have uh, no eye form at all, anathamia. They have uh, uh, um, polycyst, kidney, uh, polyrenal uh, cysts. They have cliff palate and polydactyly observed. These animals don't live very long, and they, uh, uh, unfortunately, when you miss the gene completely, uh, they, these animals die um, very early postnatal. So we have these animals, and we're studying its effect on the optic nerve, and which is of interest to ODD. Uh, here's a blow-up picture of the um, uh, optic nerve uh, of the eye uh, anathamia phenotype. So my lab, uh, early on, this is back in 2012, we had made a mal uh, zebrafish model injecting uh, IMPP5E morpholino in the mouse embryos and show that this affects um, the development of the mouse eye and uh, uh, we can rescue that by uh, gene uh, rescue. Um, and currently, what we're working on is a function of cilia in the optic nerve. This is in collaboration with Dr. Liao's laboratory, where she generates the AIOM model, and we're looking at uh, uh, cilia function and cilia structure in uh, response to that. On the top, you see that this is the optic nerve head. On the bottom is the mid-optic nerve section. And uh, when you remove, uh, uh, when you induce the AIOM, um, uh, you can see that there's, uh, uh, with the one day after, they can have a recurrence of, uh, um, you have a, a buildup of uh, cells that have cilia um, in the uh, clear, 
close to the opting nerve head. So this may suggest that there's a function of cilia in regeneration, but why is the loss of this particular protein and also structures may be re related to uh, optic distrusion, uh, we are still going to have to work on that. So in conclusion, Jobert syndrome is a group of, uh, it's a, one of the ciliopathy that uh, presents with ODD. Uh, it's not the most common phenotype, but it has been reported and it's higher than what we uh, see in uh, cross uh, uh, population in general. Number two is that the IMPP5E is a critical anostyl phosphatase that's mutated in Joubert syndrome and is an enzyme that we can uh, think about uh, gene replacement is a matter of rescue and uh, maybe a rescue sketch strategy in general. And third is that we can study uh, the role of cilia in optic nerves and renal ganglion cells and this may give us an idea of how does this uh, affect optic nerve function uh, and uh, uh, perhaps it's linked to uh, optic distrusion uh, development. Okay, and I would like to thank my laboratory. I have uh, uh, previous lab uh, members listed on top and uh, also our funding sources, which uh, includes uh, um, NIH and the VA. Okay, I'll take any questions at this point. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Yan. I'm going to read out a question from uh, Bradley Katz. Uh, is there any evidence of INPP5E involved in other cellular processes by cilia, in particular uh, mitochondrial function? Excellent question. So far, um, cilia has been linked to mitochondria. Uh, there's been several papers, um, high profile in uh, Nature Genetics, uh, the linking uh, some of the uh, mitochondrial proteins to uh, cilia function, but IMPP5E per se, no. There has not been any reports of that. And uh, I'll, I'll ask a question. I mean, I, th I think it's striking that so many uh, different uh, retinal degenerative disorders can, can give this phenotype. Um, do you think this is something downstream? Do you think there's some common factor uh, here? Yes, um, uh, I think so. So Hitchhawk is uh, Hitchhawk signaling has been the best studied and well most well reported in terms of what's related to cilia signaling. Um, of course, Hitchhawk is involved in uh, all types of uh, signaling, and uh, there are many different types of Hitchhawk proteins. So it's certainly possible that that is uh, uh, a good starting point. Um, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, wind signaling also, I think it may be good to identify some of the common um, uh, uh, genes that's maybe identified in the uh, familial uh, ODD uh, uh, genotype studies and try to see if we can link that to one of the known uh, pathways that's also affected in cilia. So uh, my lab studies cilia and we think about that, uh, uh, but uh, I'm sure there's uh, also other pathways that could be uh, involved that's that's not, uh, you know, that's not related to this particular. Uh, great, let's um, uh, go to our uh, next speaker. Uh, I'd like to introduce, uh, introduce, uh,